Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of Luke 1940. I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And I apologize to everyone for running late. We went over to my mom's house. She has a big piece of property. The grass was already real tall. So we mowed, trimmed a few trees that were had super low hanging limbs. And I had to move a, about two ton, almost two tons worth of wet hay and old tarps out of a particular spot and moved some tree limbs and uh, fixed one mower. I had to, I got to order a part for another mower. Uh, just a lot of stuff, just little little things, but they add up. And so we ended up spending most of the day over there, but uh, but we got it done. So that that's the that's the whole point, getting it done. And we got it done. My mom's hands are messed up; she can't do it. Um, her mower's been broke down forever, so we're gonna get that fixed now. And so yeah, we were we were busy. It was a long day. We just got back like 15 minutes ago. So we're going to dig into this tonight, and we're back in Luke, and the whole verse says, but he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. What is he talking about? Let's go up here. Okay, this is where he was riding on the colt. So we'll start in verse 33. You guys know the story. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Just that's the same thing Jesus told him to say. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amazing. Could you imagine being there? Some some places, some of the a couple of the other books talk about how they were breaking off palm branches and laying them down too. So that when the, the colt walked in, it didn't have to touch the ground. That when he sat on the colt, that they their clothes, he didn't have to touch the colt. They were singing loudly. You know everybody in Jerusalem heard this. Amazing. And again, he's on the Mount of Olives. That's his favorite place on the earth, evidently. Amazing. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Verse 39, and some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Like, Tell them to be quiet. Who would do something like that? You got to stop and think about that, that, that the audacity of somebody to tell the people to be quiet when they're glorifying the Lord. Those Pharisees, that was their job. This goes to show where their hearts and their heads were. They didn't want these people to sound off and glorify the Lord. That's why they're of the synagogue of Satan. These are the ones who serve the devil. They don't serve God. They don't want God. They don't want Jesus. They want the devil. They're still there to this day, unfortunately. The Lord will deal with all that in due time. So they wanted to be quiet. Hey, rebuke them. Tell them not to say. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent... The stones would immediately cry. The rocks around them would start to sing. You ever heard rocks sing? I have. There's a place here in Texas called Enchanted Rock. And it has that name for a very specific reason. And it got that name a long, long time ago. So it was first discovered that it does this back when um, 3rd ACR, funny enough, that was my unit in uh, Fort Hood. They're now 3rd Striker Brigade. 3rd ACR, 3rd Armored, Armored Cavalry Regiment. Very old unit. No longer exists, unfortunately. I saw that unit stand down. I actually was a bit sad about that because it was a great unit. They had some horsemen that were out there, a couple of soldiers that got stuck out of it. They got, they got cut off and cornered. And the Apaches were after them. I think some... Uh, Navajo were after them, but they, they were trying to kill these guys and they were fighting them off. So they ran up on top of this rock. It's a giant dome of granite, 1,850 feet up in the air. When you get up there, you see small aircraft flying eye level. Beautiful sunsets from there. 
You can go there. And you, it's right outside of Fredericksburg, Texas. You can go up there and you, it's a whole park. You can walk up there. There's trails. There's a big old cave in it. But these cowboys got up there. And it's funny because the story says there was a tree and a small pool of water and a patch of grass. It's still there. I kid you not. It's still there growing on top of that rock. They, they hunkered down in there and they were shooting and keeping the Indians away from them. Well, when night began to fall, all the Indians took off and went out on the ground. They wouldn't come near the rock. And the cowboys were like, what's going on? What, why, why did they do this? Or the, the, the soldiers. Granite, when it warms up, even from sunlight, expands. When it cools at night, it starts to retract. And when it's retracting and it's closing back in, it makes all kinds of weird noises. It oohs and ahs and screaks and creaks and squeals and pops, all kinds of noise. The Indians thought that there was, it was because it was haunted. The rock was haunted. It had spirits in it. And they didn't want to get anywhere near They wouldn't come up there at night at all. They wouldn't get anywhere near the rock. They could see their campfires out around the area, but they wouldn't get near it because it was enchanted. It was haunted rock because that granite would make all that noise. So when the soldiers realized this, they saw their opportunity and they got down there uh, when it was dark and took off. <laughs> well, now it's a tourist attraction. That's what he was talking about when he said the stones would immediately cry out. All of creation, trees, rocks, the ocean, the fish, the animals, the people, grass, everything, flowers, glorify the Lord in their own way. They all cry out. When you learn, when you learn to listen for it, and it's something lost on us. People used to know about how to do this. You learn to listen to that. You learn to pay attention to that. You'll see all of creation glorify the Lord. This eclipse is coming. That's all that is. It's glorifying the Lord. Declaring his glory in the heavens. Amazing. The blood moons. All that stuff. People look at that as a, as a harbinger of doom. I look at it as a, a, the heavens glorifying the Lord. Look at the comets we've had. The planetary alignments. You know, in the last... In the last seven years, we've had two complete planetary alignments minus one planet in the last seven years. That's amazing. But all the heavens are declaring the glory of the Lord. They're, si they're sounding off. Whenever we don't, they do. They take our place. Amazing. Amazing. So when I read something like this and what I've learned and what I've experienced over time, it speaks to me. The stones would cry out, and he's right, they would have. If those people suddenly went silent, the rocks around them would have started to sing. It would have started to make all kinds of noises. And of course, it probably would have freaked everybody out and they'd have taken off running for the hills, but Jesus knew. He knew because he created it all. Yes, the rocks have a voice. The wind sings with a beautiful whisper. The trees wave their leaves. Showing the glory of the Lord. See, when you go outside, you listen to the wind and you listen to the leaves on the trees and how they move. And when the wind passes through them, you start to realize some things, you start to see some things, you start to understand. All of creation is always glorifying the Lord. How amazing. Verse 41, now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. And the most tragic part of this is that they knew he was coming. Because they knew the days and they were calculating it. They knew the prophecies in Daniel and they were calculating all these people going on about, well, you don't know if that's actually what Daniel was talking about weeks of years. But the Jews sure did because that's what they were watching for. They knew that it was the month he was supposed to come. They knew he was about to come. You have story after story in the New Testament of people saying, are you the Messiah we've been looking for? Are you the, the, the Lord's prophet we've been waiting for? They've all been waiting for him. They all knew he was coming. They knew that was him. You can't convince me otherwise. They knew it was him. They didn't want him. 
They wanted a warlord. They wanted somebody to come and put the whole planet under the feet of the Jews into subjection. They didn't want Jesus, the suffering servant. They forgot what Isaiah said. They forgot what the other prophets said about what he was going to do. They forgot the Psalms and what it said he was going to do. So when they realized it was him and he wasn't the one they were looking for, he wasn't the one they wanted, they killed him. Praise God they did, because if he, they didn't, we wouldn't have salvation. But there's a whole lot more to this story hidden in the text. A whole lot more. It had to happen this way. For perfection, it had to happen this way. Prophecy must be fulfilled. But could the stones cry out, our devotion states? Assuredly they could, if he who opens the mouth of the dumb should bid them lift up their voice. Certainly if they were to speak, they would have much to testify and praise of him who created them by the word of his power. They could extol the wisdom and power of their maker who called them into being. Shall not we speak well of him who made us anew, and out of stones raised up children unto Abraham? The old rocks could tell of chaos and order, and the handiwork of God in successive stages of creation's drama. And cannot we talk of God's decrees, of God's great work in ancient times, in all that he did for his church in the days of old? See, we are in the Old Testament, and we're just now seeing that. The mentions and the references are obscure, but it's there. We are in the Old Testament, because everything that was done was for that moment 2,000 years ago, and everything that's come after is for this moment right now where we're at. And what's about to happen? If the stones were to speak, they could tell of their breaker, how he took them from the quarry and made them fit for the temple. And cannot we tell of our glorious breaker, who broke our hearts with the hammer of his word, that he might build us into his temple? If the stones should cry out, they would magnify their builder, who polished them and fashioned them after the similitude of a palace. And shall not we talk of our architect and builder? who has put us in our place in the temple of the living God. If the stones could cry out, they might have a long, long story to tell by way of memorial. For many a time hath a great stone been rolled as a memorial before the Lord. And we too can testify of Ebenezer's stones of kelp, pillars of remembrance. The broken stones of the law cry out against us, but Christ himself who, was rolled away, who has rolled away the stone from the door of the sepulchre, speaks for us. Stones might well cry out, but we will not let them. We will hush their noise with ours. We will break forth into sacred song and bless the majesty of the Most High, all our days glorifying him who is called by Jacob the shepherd and stone of Israel. Wonderful devotion, very powerful. I wonder if when the tribulation starts and we go to heaven, I wonder if the people on earth will hear us singing his praises and shouting his name in heaven. I wonder if the earth will also rejoice because they're finally released from futility, from the curse that was put upon them, because now the sons of God are revealed. Because the rapture, the Lord will come and take us. The sons of God will finally be revealed. Will they cry out too? Will the whole earth cry out? I think so. Will the animals and nature cry out? I think so. Will people realize that's what's happening? I don't know. See, we've been we've been untaught. Not taught or or somebody didn't teach us something. We've been untaught. People have untaught us over the years. The things we used to know, the things we used to see, the things we used to understand, we've been untaught them. Look at today. Look at today. Look in the last 40 years. What have we been untaught? You know how many people don't know how to drive a stick shift anymore? And when I was a kid, you had to learn how to drive a stick shift. There were automatics, but most cars were stick shift. You had to learn how to drive them. People used to do everything with pen and paper. Some people, I've, I've known people that can't and barely write. People used to be able to be good at math. I know people that without, if they don't have a calculator, they're stuck. People used to work for a living. People used to take their time doing things and doing them right. Look at today. 
Look at how much has changed in 40 years. I have the unique perspective of living in a time where there were no cell phones. There were no home stereos. If you did have it, it was freaking huge. There were no LEDs. There were no, there, everything was incandescent bulbs that time. That the, the most thing, fun we looked forward to was going gig, fishing for, uh, gigging for fish. We'd go on a Missouri River or the Merrimack and go gig for suckers and stay up all night around a campfire eating fish and fried potatoes and biscuits or going fishing or going hunting. People now, all they want to do is go on TikTok. Look how much has changed in 40 years. There were no cell phones. In fact, I grew up in a time in my early years where you barely, people barely had a uh, answering machine. And so if somebody called and you didn't get it and you weren't there, you had to wait till they called. And you'd never know they called. Now look at what we have. Everybody's got a phone. We are dumber today than what we were 40 years ago. People knew how to work on their cars. They could do general maintenance on their cars very easily. Some of the stuff I see today, there's a YouTube channel called Just Rolled In, and they show some stuff like that. And some of the stuff I see, these people should never be allowed near a car. Some of the things they do to their vehicles, it is disgusting how stupid people have become. I knew a helicopter mechanic, and he was a great helicopter mechanic. Worked on Chinooks with me. Couldn't find a spark plug in his car. Couldn't find it to save his life. Didn't know where his radiator was, even if he was looking at it. People are stupid. People have unlearned things. They've been untaught. All the things that the Bible talks about that people used to pay attention to 2,000 years ago, we've been untaught all those things. It's a real travesty because there's so much to learn. Have you ever sat outside reading the Bible out loud and suddenly realized you were surrounded by birds not making a noise or cats or dogs? Suddenly nature, even the crickets, even the grasshoppers suddenly went silent while you're reading the Word of God? I have it on video because I was babysitting my nephew for my brother there for a while and I'd get there real early in the morning and I would do morning devotion or not. It wasn't morning devotion then. It was a morning prayer because I was reading out of the Psalms. While I was reading, all the birds would, would fly up and land up in the rafters of the porch and sit there quietly. A dog came up one time out of nowhere. Cats and nothing would make noise while I was reading the word. I've, I've witnessed it. I've had it happen to me multiple times. You ever done that? Nature becomes silent in the reading of the word of God. Why do you think Jesus tells us, go out and preach the gospel to all of creation? He's not talking about all, all people. He's talking about everything. Go sit outside and read the Bible out loud. Watch what happens. It'll throw you for a loop. But you'll start to realize there's a lot of things that we've been untaught. A lot, a lot has been forgotten over the years. We would, we would do well to pay attention to the word of God and maybe try to learn a few more of those things because, like he said, the very rocks will cry out if we are silent. I think one of the reasons why the tribulation is so bad and why the seals describe so much incredible turmoil is because all of creation is literally going to cry out. The volcanoes, hurricanes, tidal waves, you name it. All the animals, it just and that's just the seals. That's not counting the actual trumpet judgments. That's just the seals. A lot of people today think we're in the seals. Oh, no, we're not in the seals. You ain't seen nothing yet. The seals, whole world. Right now, this stuff's not affecting the whole world. Whole world. The animals are going to run out of the woods and attack people for no reason. Maybe that's them saying, we're finally free. The sons of God have been revealed. We're finally free. Maybe the reason why that stuff doesn't happen now is because we're still here. Because the restrainer is still here, holding it all back. When we're gone, what's to hold it back? Who knows? I think the whole earth is going to cry out. We'll hear it. Because we're going to have ears that can hear those things. The rest of the world might not. Who knows? I don't want to be here to find out. I want to go be with the Lord. So that we can cry out his name in heaven, in the throne room. Thunderous. Millions of us. Glorifying God in his presence. 
Incredible. Incredible to even think about or consider. What a wonderful blessing to know these things, to learn these things in the Word. See these little, little, little things here hidden in the text. These little nuances in the speech start to tell a really, really broad story. It starts to give us a much better insight, like what we've discovered about the Lord's crucifixion. A lot of people don't know. He was suffering in agony days prior, up to a week, of him being nailed to a cross. This wasn't a singular one-day event. This happened over a time frame. A lot of people don't know that. There's a lot more to the crucifixion than just believing Jesus died on the cross. There's a whole lot more detail to it. It's amazing. It just goes to show the love of the Lord and how we have been untaught so many things concerning his glory. It's time we relearn it. So let's relearn it by reading the Bible, becoming familiar with the scriptures, going into prayer and talking to the Lord. Say, Lord, show me these things. Prove to me these things. Let me see these things. Teach me these things so that I may glorify you in the earth. And when I'm in heaven with you, glorify you in heaven. It is to his glory that he answered that prayer. We are the children of God. Let us cry out our allegiance. Cry out his glory singing hallelujahs and amens because we know who our Lord is. We love our Lord and every day we get a little closer to being with him. Brothers and sisters, do not take your eyes off the Lord. Do not take your eyes off the skies, but keep watching. But while you're watching, pay attention to the world around you. Listen. Start learning what the Bible says about what goes on concerning this word. And, and the environment around us, and you'll start to see it. I've seen it. A lot of people think, oh, that's weird. Go try it. You'll see for yourself, and it will shock you. But then you'll start to understand. I now know what Jesus meant when he said, if they shut up, these stones are going to cry out. Nature knows who its Lord is. Creation knows who its Lord is. We need to know who our Lord is. And Lord... I say this short and sweet. Make us to know more about you and who you are because that's just going to make us love you more. And you are worthy of that love, worthy of that glory, worthy of all praise. May we give you that in what we do every day, in our prayers, in our devotions, in our readings. May we do it laying on our beds, standing up in the living room, wherever we are. Because you are worthy more than worthy. In your name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. Again, I apologize for being late, but I think it was worth it. I'm encouraged. I'm, I'm excited. I'm tired because of all the work I did today, but I'm, 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 yeah, this is good. I love these devotions. These things are amazing. Let's keep watching, guys. Let's keep hanging on. Don't get caught up in all the, the crowd and all the nonsense that's going on and all them getting hyper vigilant and hyper, you know, hyper sensitive to things. This eclipse is going to come and go. Everything's going to do what it's going to do. And I recommend everybody, and this is just, you know, hopefully nobody clicked away yet. I recommend everybody go get any of your shopping done by the 6th because you don't want to be on the road the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th because people are going to be traveling to and from these areas. There are people that are going to go to the southernmost or northernmost city along that path and they're going to travel spot to spot as that eclipse passes over. That's weird. That's weird because they're all going gaga over this. We just had one seven years ago. We just had one. So get your shopping done. Get all your running done. Stay home. Don't be on the road because people are going to be nuts. They're shutting down schools. Uh, there's places that have uh, businesses that are closing because of how bad it's going to be. They're predicting the stores are going to clear out because there's going to be so many people traveling, chasing this thing. What in the world? And if you're looking at this from Joel 2.31, read Joel 2.30. I don't think we want this to be that. <laughs> I don't think we want this eclipse to be that because what comes before that is bad. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I'll see you in the next video.